Hi, I'm Jen Spencer, and this is Jen Spencer's 10-Minute Book Club. Hi, readers. Thank you so much for being here. I hope it's cooled off a little bit in your neck of the woods. It hasn't cooled off much here, but a little bit, so yay for that. I'm so excited today to interview Kathleen Fuller. She is a great friend and just a wonderful person and you're going to love getting to know her. Remember that if you ask a question or leave a comment in the comment section below, you'll be entered to win one of Kathy's books, Sold by Love. She's going to tell us about it and it sounds darling. And also you'll be entered to win an ebook copy of My Dandelion Meadows, which is a funny, sweet, romance set in a small town in Idaho with quirky characters that you are going to fall in love with. And also remember to sign up for my email newsletter, um, jenspencerauthor.com, and you will get a free copy of my hilarious and wildly romantic Jesse and James. And now I'm so excited to introduce Kathleen Fuller. Kathleen, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. I'm I'm good. I'm good. Um, I might be better later on, but I'm really good right now. And thank you for having me. Yes. Can we say that you're going to have back surgery? Is it next week? It's on the 16th. Yeah. So um, um, I'm hoping that this is going to you know take care of some very long-standing back problems I've had. And so just been kind of busy, you know, getting things wrapped up and finishing up a book. Um, and so, but um, I just appreciate you asking me to come on your your show, your program, your call. What do you call it? Uh, my, I don't know, my book club. My book club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I you. am so sorry about your back surgery. I, as a writer, you, I feel like you are just sitting all day, right? And it's oh, yeah. just... I mean, back problems are almost inevitable. I have to stretch all the time or my back just starts hurting. It's yeah, um, I didn't realize that. That wasn't exactly the warning I got when I started writing. And um, when I started writing full time, that's when it really started setting in. But what I've done for oh, like eight years now, I think it is maybe, is I get up every 30 to 40 minutes. And even if it's just I go walk around the office or go put in a load of laundry, that really helps. That also gets all your other joints moving. So any of you writers out there, people who sit for long periods of time, make sure you get up, you know, 30 minutes, if you can, 45 minutes at least, um, just to kind of work out the kinks and stuff. Yeah, that is so true. So important. Well, so Kathy and I are old friends. We um, both write Amish romances. I write it under Jennifer Beckstrand. She writes it under Kathleen Fuller. And we um, met, when did we first meet? Was it a writer's conference? It, well, well, it's not a conference. It was a get together. And I'm trying to remember which one it was, because I oh, think we've been at a few of them together now. Too. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. It's probably well, it's before 2020 for sure. Yeah. So yeah. maybe 2018, 2019. So. Yeah. And we had, we just hit it off. We've written some books, some anthologies, collections together. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided to branch out into sweet romance and Kathleen also did. Mm -hmm. And so I said, come on my book club. Cause I know my readers would love to hear about you. Um, Cause Kathy is such a great writer. I love reading Thank her you. books. And um, so I'm sure that the books are great. Why don't you start out? Tell us how you got into writing, kind of how that journey has gone for you. Um, well, when I started writing uh, January 1st, 2000, uh, before that, I never really considered being a writer. I mean, I kind of thought I might be a journalist for a hot minute and then took a journalism class in high school and was told never to take another one, never to write again. So that kind of, you know, that kind of, you know, pushed me off that path. And I went, I went ahead and became a teacher, got my uh, degrees in, special, in elementary education, special education. I got married, I had a family. And then when my kids were really small, my youngest was probably like two, I started reading Christian romances. And at the same time, I was just asking God, you know, how, how can I serve you? What would you like me to do? And even though 
having a writing career as a ministry is a, is a bit self-serving. I mean, probably because it's just so much fun. It, it's a way for me to reach an audience and, and reach people I wouldn't normally have been able to reach. So um, I had kind of been interested in maybe dabbling in writing again. Um, I was homeschooling my kids and I thought, you know what, I could just you know try this in the morning. And then I tried it and I realized I couldn't write. So I took, um, do you remember correspondence courses? Yeah. Back in the old days, I took a correspondence days. course, learned how to write. Um, being an avid reader really helped a lot mm -hmm. uh, with writing. So anybody who, you know, if you want to be an aspiring writer, you, you need to be reading and reading widely. Um, and then I got my first contract with Tyndale um, in 2001. And uh, my first novella, it was a novella. I started in short stories. I had a couple published online. Then um, I had, uh, my first one was a novella. And, and the thing about 2001 is that right after I got that phone call, 9-11 happened. Mm. And we were moving and it was just a whole whole thing and everything. Um, and my birthday's 9-11 as well. So it was it a great is. birthday. Yeah, it was a great birthday present. <laughs> But it was also just kind of one of those emotions that, you know, everybody knows how they felt on that day and everything. But um, so then I just, it's, I've been writing ever since. Now I've had periods of when, you know, I, things were like really hopping. I was getting contracts and then they just slowed down. And that's just kind of the way the business is. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started writing Amish fiction was when I really started writing um, steadily. And I ended up retiring from teaching and uh, working full time, mm -hmm. writing full time. Yeah. That's great. So now you've started writing some sweet romances. Yes. And um, what made you decide to do that? You just wanted to branch out from Amish. That's kind of why yeah. I wanted to branch out, try a few other genres and different mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Well, my first books, um, well, my very first one was a contemporary, the, um, the uh, novella that I wrote for Tyndale was a, a contemporary. And then I wrote a historical, and then I had some uh, contem a contemporary and some historicals published with um, Avalon Publishing, which was actually bought out by Montlake um, a okay. while back. Yeah. Um, and so I've written in other jo genres before, but once I got into the Amish genre, you know, they it, it's kind of a thing in publishing. If you start it in, in one genre, you start picking up speed, readers identify you with that. And I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, building up that audience and everything and, you know, honing my skills as a writer too. But it, it kind of got to the point where I needed a different creative outlet. Unfortunately, my publisher was very happy to mm -hmm. oblige. And um, so we, you know, branched out into Sweet Romance and um, I love it. I think it's really helped my writing, my Amish as well. Um, because now <clears throat> I work with, when I go to write an Amish book, I feel pretty invigorated. Mm. You know, I, th I think, you know, doing different things. Um, I also crochet too. And I have to say, once I picked up crochet and had a different creative outlet, that helped too. Because I think if you're creative, you're not just stuck in one activity. You, you kind of want to do a whole lot of stuff. And at least I do. Um, so true. That's so, how I am too. Yeah, yeah. So theater. I, think I love have, the theater. <laughs> your, your theater, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's, um, I think that's what, I, I think it's just really helped. And I, I'm excited about my writing again. Not that I wasn't, but those, those of us have been in long careers, whether it's writing or something creative, or even if it's not, and it's just, you know, a nine to five job. Uh, you go through those ebbs and flows of, you know, kind of feeling a little stagnant and then I think you feel more creative. So right now I'm feeling very creative and it's oh, been good. a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, so tell us about this book okay. that we're going to talk about today, Sold on Love. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. Um, so this is the third book in the Maple Falls series and Maple Falls is set in um, a fictional town in Arkansas. And there's a whole story behind how that came about that has to do with the yarn shop. But uh, Sold on Love is about Harper. And if you've read the other two books, Hooked on You and Much Ado About a Latte, 
um, you will have recognized her in um, the other stories because kind of side plot that's going through these books is that there's two groups of female friends. There's older friends who mm. are in their 60s, 70s, close to 80, and they're called the Booze and Buddies. And then there's four younger friends and they're still trying to figure out what their name is. Um, so Harper's part of that friend group. And, um, and she's a very, very um, high fashion uh, image conscious person and she is an overworked real estate agent she kind of jumped into the business uh, and bit off more than she could chew and so she has this Mercedes it's her dream car she always wanted it um, and it's a lemon so she ends up having to be towed by Rusty who's this good old boy mechanic who, and those of us who are a certain age, remember this guy, Grizzly Adams, he's basically Grizzly Adams with red hair and a Southern accent. <laughs> so he, he's been working on her car and um, sparks kind of sort of fly. It's kind of a slow burn there, but um, you know, they're both kind of hiding behind certain things and um, not really being true to themselves and together. Together, they kind of figure those things out and I'm cutting it off there because I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> yeah, so. oh, sound darling. Oh my goodness. Thank you. How fun. So this is the third book. Mm -hmm. um, and um, who, who is it published with? Um, it's published with, it's HarperCollins, but you know, they have some divisions. Let me look. Thomas Nelson. Thomas okay. Nelson Publishers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my Amish books are also published with HarperCollins, but it's under the, the I'm sorry, the Zondervan. Okay. Uh, in print. So, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I just had wow. It. Well, so much fun. Okay. Readers, you need to go pick that up. It sounds like a great book, a great read. How fun. Thank you. Well, um, so we're almost out of time mm -hmm. at, because these go really fast. And uh, so <laughs> I just want to ask you a couple of fun questions. First of all, what is like your favorite romantic movie? Oh, it's the Princess Bride. Um, I don't, have to, I don't Bride. even have to think. The Princess Bride. <laughs> it's not only my favorite romantic movie; it's my favorite movie. Really? Yeah, okay. and I don't, and I don't watch it very often because I just don't want to get tired of it. I don't want it to be. It, it's like an event for me when I watch it. Um, oh. I love that movie. I do. I love that movie too. It is so charming, it and is. just everything about it true love, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so <I> love. <laughs> and there's so many one-liners and yeah oh, it's yes. just wonderful yeah <laughs> that is very cool I love that you know that I haven't thought of that one but that is really romantic and super cute just mm -hmm. just so entertaining so on many different levels you know the grandpa and the grandson mm -hmm. it's so cute with their relationship okay that's a great one Thank yep. you. Um, and okay, the last question I ask this to all my guests. Mm -hmm. You're stuck on a desert island. Okay. Would you rather have a lifetime supply of chocolate or toilet paper? Hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to assume the chocolate is wrapped, correct? <laughs> you can Therefore, have any you want <laughs> uh, if I'm on a desert island I think I could come up with a substitute for toilet paper but not one for chocolate so I'll say chocolate okay I probably would regret that decision if I was really on one but right now <laughs> it's chocolate <laughs> what would you choose I I'd choose toilet paper too I mean toilet I paper chocolate. I would choose toilet paper because <laughs> I just I'm I'm very practical I I'm very I don't know if persnickety is the right word, but I have to have, wherever I go, I have to have my own bathroom and a good bathroom and a toilet that flushes. And this is why we don't camp, you know. We just... Well, you know what? I understand that and totally agree with that. Um, but um, if I was alone, then that island would be mine. <laughs> but I, I get it because I'm the same way when I travel. I really like to have things a certain way. And I love to travel, but no. Oh. Yeah. And that, see, that is, it's kind of a stumbling block for me because I don't like to travel for those very reasons. Mm. I just, I don't like to be, and that's so silly because it's, it's not a ton of discomfort, but it's enough that I don't like that. You know, it's yeah. just, I don't know. Well, if it's not, if, if it's not enjoyable and you can't relax and enjoy your trip, then 
then I can see where it would be a stumbling block and, and that's okay. I mean, yeah, (laughs) it's okay. I'm a homebody. That's okay. (laughs) That's perfectly okay. (laughs) But I'm glad you go on these trips and come, come to these um, Amish events because it's so much fun hanging out with you and your husband. It is so fun. I agree. And I, it is, it is funny how, how really hard those are for me just Mm. just getting there just the travel but I love Mm. being there and I love seeing everybody so yes I'll I will commit to keep doing that (laughs) for sure and you got it really well I would never know that that it was a struggle for you so (laughs) well like I said I really when I'm there and I have a bathroom that I can go to Mm. I just love being with the people and everything so so much fun well Kathy thank you so much for being here it's just been such a pleasure and thank you for telling us about your book readers be sure to pick it up and be sure to um, pick up my book uh, Dandelion Meadows which is a sweet contemporary romance that I think you're gonna love have a great day Kathy bye